shortly we'll start the meeting sir when uh, shortly two or three minutes we'll start sir is it okay sir okay sir okay 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 yes, sir okay yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. yes sir thank you sir thank you Participants, uh, kindly uh, stop sending good morning to all in the chat box. It's a uh, once it is get top crowded, uh, we, we are communicating. Thank you. Forty-two. Yes, sir. Your presentation is now visible, sir. Okay, I'm also audible. I'm yes, also sir. audible. Very clear, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Very clear, sir. Okay, okay, fine. Yes, yes sir. Uh, give the introduction, sir. Follow, uh, yeah. follow me. We'll start the session, sir. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Please. Sham, sir. Sham. Two fifty plus minus, sir. Yeah, you have accepted all the dinner. Sir, uh, sir, can you ah. hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, sir, just uh, for uh, another two minutes, we'll uh, proceed the session, sir. Okay, okay, sir. It starts. Okay. I didn't receive messages. Uh, 
Uh, Professor, Shazam. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you just uh, 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 make it as a um, slide. Uh, slide show? Ah, slide show. Yes, sir. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sir. Okay. It's all right. One minute. The bottom is coming up like one minute. Okay, so. Yes, no, what is happening? I clicked it twice. What has happened, Fred? So okay, sir. Hello. It's okay yes, now. Fantastic. Now it's okay, sir. Now it's okay. Okay, okay. Sir. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, Professor, shall we start our session, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Sir. Sir, before please. Uh, going to the session, I just uh, given a brief uh, welcome to the participants as well as you, and uh, I just share you the your brief introduction about yourself. Right, no, sir. No, it's all right, sir. It's all right. It's all right. Great, sir. Uh, dear participants, uh, very good morning to one and all present here. We are. Uh, uh, on behalf of Hindustan College of Engineering Technology and Department of Automobile Engineering, and I welcome today's uh, speaker, Dr. M. M. S. Shah, Senior Associate Professor, Special Center for Nanoscience, Department of uh, Physics, Postgraduate, and National Inst Institute of Technology, Srinagar, and I extended my warm welcome to. Uh, today, participants from across the country to uh, take uh, actively participating in this program. Before uh, hand over the session to today's speaker, Mr. Shah MS, I just give an, a brief introduction about uh, his profile. He was a uh, master. He was he has completed master uh, program in uh, applied physics in NIT Srinagar, and he was a founder member secretary for a Central Research Facility. National Institute of Technology, and convener and uh, principal investigator for Inspire Intensive Program, uh, uh, Prime Minister Initiative in Government of India. He has uh, organized and chairperson for various international conferences, and especially in nanotechnology for better uh, living. He was uh, in charge, head of the Department of Physics from in the era of 2016, and he observed and in charge of uh, NPTEL examination in the Kashmir region. He has a research interest in the fabrication of nanomaterials through soft root, as well as metal oxide nanomaterials, biomaterials, and semiconduction ceramics, and synthesis and characterization of metal oxide and hydroxide, and graphene and its application in day to day life, and the application of nanomaterials in biological sciences. And he was uh, he has an active board, uh, board member and member, uh, having a membership in Member of Material Research and Society of India. Member of International Nanotechnology Society, Electron Microscopic Society of India, Electron Microscopy and Society of Saudi Arabia, and Member Secretary for Indian Indian Nanobiologist Association. He has uh, published uh, several books and he has uh, received honors from uh, uh, World Bank funded project is around uh, 100 lakhs for setting up electron microscopic center at NIT Srinagar, and he has. Um, uh, Completed the nano mission funder project of rupees two crores for setting up nano mission laboratory in NIT Srinagar. He has organized a 10 mega science event 
of Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, under Inspire Internship Program in a Prime Minister Initiative for Bright Students. He organized Mega International Conference on Nanotechnology for Better Living. So with the short notes, once again, I welcome today's speaker, Mr. M. S. Shah, a Senior Associate Professor from NIT Srinagar. And I extend a warm, warm welcome to uh, uh, professors and participants from various parts of our country. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, we'll honor to have a session. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sabri. Thank you. Please convey my, my gratitude and my greetings and warm greetings to all participants from Kashmir. Yeah. Oh, great. Sir. From Kashmir. <laughs> we I see all people. the participants writing on the footnote. Good morning to all. Good morning. So accept my congratulations, accept my greetings from Kashmir. Second, Dr. Sabri, convey my gratitude. Dr. Sabri, can you hear me? Yeah, Hello. yes, sir. Thank yeah. you. Convey my address. gratitude, convey my gratitude to the patrons of this program, to the backers, to your team, congrats for organizing this program. And that I'll share with you, share with the participants, probably most of them might be from Tamil Nadu. I'll share with a good thing with you. Last year, I received a mail from Professor Jay Kumar of Anna University. Wherein it has been mentioned that the two government of India has made Tamil Nadu and JNK twin states. They have made a memorandum of understanding for exchange of faculties, for exchange of students, for exchange of cultural events. So these two states have been culvered. But unfortunately, things could not kick off, and I congratulate. Uh, Hindustan College of Engineering and their administration to give a kick start of this program. So other colleges should also come up and join with join with the colleges of Jammu and Kashmir and start these given programs. I'll send you that mail. I'll send you that mail so that you can share that mail with the participants. Dr. Sabri. Hello, Dr. Sabri. Hello. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the meeting. Sir. You are in the meeting, but you keep your mic open. Okay. It becomes a one log. I was saying that there is a there is a there is a memorandum of understanding between the two states, okay. Jammu and Kashmir and Tamil Nadu. Ah, <laughs> fantastic, sir. <laughs> okay. In which in which we can exchange the faculties, we can exchange the students, we can exchange these programs and then the cultural events also sure sir though they are not that are, that's not a scientific but nonetheless that is also an important cultural events yes <clears throat> going back, going to the our topic today's topic teaching nanotechnology to next generation and then and the general question is how to engage this next generation this is a question and particularly in this pandemic which is our common sorrow and common pain i'll start with einstein i'll start with einstein if students are there they should write down it or see it in the internet bear in mind that the wonderful things you learn in your schools is the work of many generations. All this is to put into your hands as your inheritance in order that you may receive it, honor it, add to it, and one day faithfully hand it on to your children. Thus we mortals achieve immortality in the permanent things that we create in common. So I believe that the new research, which is coming up every day, must be better reported and properly communicated to the next generation. The future of the society depends on that. I believe in this 
that we have to hand it over to the next generation that too faithfully and honorably. I'll go to that world shared plan to protect this planet. Sustainable development goals. Abdum, the sub clause in fourth goal, where it is written as a quality education. The sub clause of that is increase the supply of qualified teachers in developing countries. We need good teachers. Though we have a knowledgeable teachers, we need to have a tuning. We need to have a good tuning. We have to untap the vast potential of the students. Vast potential. And when that untapped potential of a student meets the liberating art of a teacher, a miracle will unfold. Not only a, many miracles will unfold, and all these issues which has been enlisted by the world's by the sustainable development goals team united nations will all eradicate it will all be fulfilled probably prior to 2030 and then i also have quoted just as ripple separates The actions of the individuals can have far-reaching effects. Yeah. During this, probably prob before this pandemic, I have listed top most 10 problems which the humanity is facing. If students are there, they should write down these. They can add to it. They may educate me that there are other issues also which the humanity is facing right now. The health care and disease, the water treatment and remediations, energy storage and production, food processing and storage, agriculture production and answer, environment and pollution, starvation and poverty, sustainable materials, population explosion, and then there is an unemployment. There are many issues. There were many issues prior to this pandemic also. We were having issues in healthcare, if you believe. We were having malignancy. Excuse me, sir. Sorry to disturb you. Yeah. Sir, uh, slide, can you bit, uh, reduce the size of the slide because we are not able to see the entire uh, script which you are presenting? If you don't mind. Side of Okay, okay, okay. Is it Sorry, if not you told me? It's yes. okay? Professor. It's okay now? Yes, again, slightly zoom in, sir. Zoom in, sir. Slightly zoom in. Okay. Slightly zoom in. No, it will create a trouble then. It will create a trouble. Okay, let me see and let me do it later. Okay, okay. Sir. Yes. okay. It will create a trouble, unnecessary trouble. So I was saying that before this pandemic, before this pandemic, I also uh, attended that lecture of that Tedros online lecture, wherein he said that we have received a lost case of Ebola somewhere from Ethiopia. It was settled on that a new virus has engulfed the whole world. And then this, these are the issues which I have enlisted are for 6.5 billion people. And what will happen to these issues when will be 10 billion? Probably this is expected to, do, to be by 2050, 10 billion. What will happen to these issues? We, were, we, are, having, we are having major crisis of these issues. I'll name one, healthcare and diseases. Water treatment. Do you know how many children die before having their first birthday? We are having many issues related with energy. We could not harvest energy. We could not clean water. Thanks goes to the, um, to the agriculture scientists who gave that Green Revolution 1. No, we are self-sufficient in food. But it still needs to be announced. 
We have tax of environment. Before this pandemic, we were supposed to close down the institutions at times. And, many, and we need to go to other planets to find out materials, sustainable materials. We have a population explosion, we have an unemployment. I cannot speak on these two issues. These are, these are policy matters and then other issues. The scientific issues we can solve. And then also I have written that there is hardly any problem on which science cannot make some contribution. There is hardly any problem. Science can do the contributions, make contributions on everywhere. Now the historical revolution regarding <clears throat> the different revolutions which came till date from the birth of the science, from the birth of the industries and the technologies, of them the, it has been divided into two revolutions one was industrial revolution and one is the information revolu uh, revolu revolution. Among the industrial revolution, the automobile sector has was the key force for economic revolution across the globe in 1920s. By the mid of 1920s, it ranked first in the value of product. And in 82, it provided one out of the six jobs in developing countries. So it was regarded as one of the major economic boost prior to 2020, prior to 2000. And now in this information technology, when technology has come up, this is no, that's known as a nanotechnology. This interdisciplinary technology is going to revolutionize the whole world, revolutionize our life, the life of our children and to their children. It is still in infancy. There are reports that it had done many good things to those problems which I have enlisted. In healthcare sector, it, has, it is doing good. In water treatments, in energy storage, in food, in agriculture, in environment, it has done many good things. It has done many good things. And the materials, it, <coughs> you know what it is doing. This nanotechnology, this technology has been referred as a garden of physical sciences by the one who got the Nobel Prize, that Somali in 1985, he got the Nobel Prize for the discovery of what? Is there any student? For the discovery of Dr. Sam, hello, hello, sir, yes, sir. Hello, uh, am I connected? Am I connected? Sir, of course, sir. We are very, very, very clear, sir. Your voice as well as, uh, yes, sir. You are clear, sir. Okay, okay. I'll tell you. A, yes. I'll tell you a, in between. I'll tell you a joke. These politicians have a very um, bad habit of getting people along with. Hello. Yeah, yes, sir. They are politicians. When they move, nah, they should okay. have five or ten people at the back. <laughs> so one day that politician was walking and at the back there were five or ten people. But he was telling them that we have to take this initiative, we have to build this um, uh, bridge, and then we have to construct this building, and then this. In the meantime, he reached home, and then the wife told him that uh, to whom you are talking? Said, oh, people are, there was none. <laughs> okay, sir, sir. Okay. <laughs> they had already gone. <laughs> so same thing should not happen. Okay. So this, <clears throat> this nanotechnology has been named as a garden of physical sciences. And there are many gardeners. There are many gardeners. This is not a subject belonging to physics, chemistry, or biology. It belongs to automobile. It belongs to the, <clears throat> even the best thing I can say, it belongs to humanities and the social science people also, because public perception has to be needed. And from this garden of researchers from across the academic disciplines could harvest solutions for the major crisis facing the world in terms of 
health care, in terms of energy, in terms of water shortage, in terms of an ailing environment, overpopulation and poverty. Hopefully it will solve money issues because it's an amalgam of money sinuses. Many gardeners have joined, many people are. You go to the website of any university, of any developed countries or any developing countries, you can see many people are working on nanotechnology. One way or the other, they are contributing to it. <clears throat> These are the nanoparticles which we have grown. This is the technology, this is the invisible science. The scale is 200 nanometers. And see the beauty of these pebbles, see the beauty of these pebbles. They have altogether different shape. And this is the first time, first time this revolution has come up that having a different shape, having a different size, it changes the properties. So a new mathematics has to be born now. A new mathematics has come up. Geometry has now has to play a role. And then there is a limitless potential applications, limitless. This is the first time in the history of a science, from Galileo even. We used to have teachers who used to tell us that if you want to change the properties of any material or any substance, you need to change the composition. See this new science. We started its journey in 2000. Which says that no, it's not only the composition. It is the size. It's the shape of the material which determines the properties. So every particle which is below 100 nanometers, probably below 100 nanometers. I do have a scale of this one at the bottom. So have altogether different properties. Every particle behaving differently. <clears throat> now the question is, now the question is, how to take this new science, how to take this invisible science to the classroom, to the next generation, whom we are going to teach, how to take it. Dr. Sabri, Dr. Sabri. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah I'm in line. Keep your mic open, keep your mic open so that it becomes a one-way monologue. If I go on speaking and then nobody is responding, <laughs> so it becomes, yeah, it becomes a one way on a lot. I don't, uh, okay. that should not be the teaching. That should not be the teaching. Yeah. Great. Stop me anytime, anyway. No, the question is that to me, the question is that to my fellow colleagues also, though we all are knowledgeable people, knowledgeable faculty we have, how to take these new sciences to the classroom, to the next generation? Yes. So developing the faculty, one of the one of the one of the one of the main aim is that to develop the faculty is that how to take these new technologies to the people to the next generation. There are many ways. There are many ways, and many eminent ways. Many eminent professors have given their ways. I have my way. I see that I was in a class eight. I used to remember my class eight. Okay. Sir. So in class eight, we used to have a teacher, one honorable teacher. May God give him rest and peace there. So this was a this was regarded as one of the important questions during those days. And the question was simple that what are the allotrophy forms of the carbon? It was a very simple question in Kashmir. It used to come in board examinations also. What are the allotropy forms of the carbon? And then I used to write down, and we also used to write down that we do have two most important allotropy forms of carbon. One is diamond and one is graphite. graphite. Diamond, we know the hardest material known till date, does not conduct electricity, 
graphite we know as a soft material conducts electricity these were the these were, were these were were answers to the teacher that we have two allotrophies of the carbon the well known diamond the well known graphite the scientific journey is on the scientific journey went on in 85 when i did my intermediate hello when i did my intermediate in 85 professor professor there was stuck yes <coughs> yeah he is online so ah, yes. okay no, yes i'm i'm okay so okay. 85 they presented to the world another form of the carbon so had i been there in the class and had that teacher been there in that class he would have asked me gentlemen how many forms of carbon do we have so the answer would have been the three the bucky ball has been added the buck minister fluorine has been added and see the beauty of this third form it is dimension was only 1 nanometer it is dimension was only hello yes sir 1 uh, nanometer sir 1 nanometer yeah the third form of the carbon was in nano dimensions we used to have seen diamond blocks we used to have seen the graphites and then all all of us have seen graphite in a pencil we used to write yes sir but a third form has come up by by somali from rice university and then one was from sasaki university and they got the nobel prize in 1996 probably for this third form of the carbon it was a closed cage it could not be put to practical applications many applications nonetheless it was a discovery nonetheless it is a well known third form of the carbon third allotrophy of the carbon story went on in 91 so a student a, a school child knows two forms of the carbon he knows the third form of the carbon luckily to the different boards of the of the country they have introduced this third form of the carbon in the textbooks of 10th class probably in ncert books so our students in colleges are well acquainted with the three forms of the carbon two are in a micro scale but the one is having a nano dimension story went on scientific discoveries went on a japanese professor came up somaya ijma came up in a conference he showed another form of a carbon he was laughed at he showed that that this carbon exists in tabular forms also oh he was said that what what are you showing gentlemen carbon exists in diamond form it exists in graphite form it exists in a charcoal form amorphous form it exists in a buckyball form football form you are showing the tabular form of the carbon so these engineers are very clever they took up the material they saw its mechanical strength they checked its strength they checked its properties those were much more good than the other forms of the carbon the doctors on seeing the strength they are much more intelligent they loaded the drug inside the tube inside this carbon tube which was also in nano dimension and loaded the drug inside the tube and delivered the drug at a place where it was needed 
Hello, hello. Yeah, that 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 gave the birth to a drug delivery system. This was a new milestone in the medical sciences. Drug delivery systems with the help of a tube which was having nano dimensions and which was made of carbon atoms. Yes. Ye wo tube tha, ye wo pipe thi, jo carbon atoms se bani hui thi. Maybe I'm wrong. People from South will not understand Hindi. So I will again repeat Quite that so. this tube, that this tube, which was made of carbon atoms, which is of nano dimensions, probably two to two point five nanometers, was used for drug delivery systems. When people saw its mechanical strength. They worked on it. They worked on its fabrication. There are dozens of fruits for its fabrication, and they could also fabricate two walled carbon nanotubes, double wall carbon nanotube, and triple wall carbon nanotubes. See these intelligent doctors. They loaded two drugs. They loaded three drugs at a time. Simultaneously and delivered the drug at a place where that was being used, and then there was that was also a, a um, question of controversy: what will happen to the nanotube when it is being when it delivers the drug? That is even being taken away now, and then even that goes and that moves through the veins, as uh, if some of you might have visited Kashmir. This carbon nanotube moves in a vein similarly, similarly, exactly in the same way as the boat moves in a dull lag. This is behind me, behind my department. Great. Sir. <coughs> so this was the fourth form of the carbon. This was the fourth allotrophy of the carbon. A wonderful discovery. Carbon nanotubes. It, it has revolutionized the world. And believe me, and believe me, I have always been saying to it that not only a single element of the periodic table, I don't know about those, uh, those radioactive materials, probably with those exceptions, without those. All the elements of the periodic table have been investigated in nano dimensions. And almost all of them are showing good performance as the carbon nanotube is showing better than graphite, better than diamond. Materials, all materials, all elements of the periodic table have been produced in nano dimensions and all of them are showing excellent performances. This was the this was the big bang in the history of a science. This was the first time in the history of a science that materials are showing excellent properties. Materials are showing far good properties when they are produced in nano dimensions. This was the first time in the history of a science. And nonetheless, it was the fourth part of the carbon nanotube. Story went on. In 1947, Dr. Sabri, Dr. Sabri, yes, sir. Yes, sir. in 1947, okay, sir. Wells has written in his book, and even he has derived the equations, okay. that single layer of a graph, graphite is possible. Okay. Graphite is a layered structure. Graphite is a layered structure. Graphite has a layered structure. You just see that is one layer on the top of it, another layer on the top of it is an another layer. And they are weakly bounded. In 1947, Wells has written in his book and has written even the equations that a single layer of graphite can is possible, is possible. Okay. And probably in 56 also, people came up with the same explanation, with the same prediction that the single layer is possible. 
but people the particularly the physicists used to beat their head how to take a single layer from a graphite block a student last time last week probably in the month of march yeah in the month of march he came up that i have got some a graphite block so then i told him that how do you say that this is a graphite block and then he conducted it electricity it was it burned up it gave spark like anything but it is still in investigation whether that's a graphite or not but taking a single layer from a graphite block was a very it was a very huge task it was a very huge task and we could not make it till 2004 a russian boy who had his phd in the united kingdom then have a couple of postdocs and finally settled in manchester was able to peel off a single layer of graphite from a graphite block and then that single layer is known as a graphene my dear participants my dear participants we will not go into the details of that single layer of graphite but i will say i'll not hesitate in saying this is one of the wonderful materials so far the material scientists have been able to produce so far in the history of the science such the blessings are this material is having such a wonderful material this is such a thinnest material it is it is made up of a single atom but not even a single gas molecule can escape from the it it has wonderful applications i'll tell you one see we use we use it to guard our environment we use we make nano sensors with it what happens when a nano sensor is built out of a this single sheet of graphite if any bad molecule comes in contact with it its resistance changes it changes its resistance it gives a buzz that this h1n1 this virus has entered into the classroom it has entered into the campus we need to wear the masks we need to guard our people so graphene has applications a list of it is in front of me it's being used in your smartphones it's being used it is it's being used for display screens in your mobile devices it's going to change the lithium ion batteries that recharge factor it's being used in ultra capacitors with better performance than the existing batteries it has a components with higher strength to weight ratios its weight is very less very less and it is because of the less weight that many aircrafts and space craft parts will be replaced by this material which has a strength close to the diamond even higher than that by that the weight of that aircraft space craft will be reduced once the weight is reduced once the weight is reduced it uses less fuel once it uses less fuel the environmental problems will be less it will be reduced appreciably see this wonderful material which is going to replace the heavy heavy materials very soon very soon it's being used for storing hydrogen for fuel cell cars lower cost fuel cells low cost water distillation gas tanks lightweight natural gas tanks more efficient disensized solar cells electrodes with very high surface area and very low electrical resistance this has many applications many more applications this wonderful material and i have been saying to it to my students that this is one of the material which of which we are proud of which we have been able to produce so far in the history of sciences in for in the history of material sciences we need to find out many more materials like this
many more materials like this. So in 2010, they got the Nobel Prize. This Andrew Jim, Russian scientist, got a Nobel Prize for, for isolating a single layer of graphene from the graphite block. And go to that YouTube and see that wonderful discovery, how he has made it with simple a pencil and a sketch tab. He was able to isolate a single layer of graphene, which we used to, for which we used to long for about for about mm, two decades. It is it's around five decades, five decades. We were not in a position to isolate that. Okay. Sir. Though, they, though the equations were written, though it was predicted. Though it, uh, the history is there, though it was, it was not named as a graphene then. It was not named as a graphene then. It was named as a single layer of a graphite. But it was, it was possible. Because there is a weak force within the layers and a single layer can be peeled off. And during my PhD, we used to uh, peel off single layer of cadmium iodide. And we used to say that these are the polytypic forms of the cadmium iodide. People used to work on silicon carbide also, zinc sulfide also. They used to peel off single layers of that and every of them were in angstrom dimensions. In the morning, Dr. Sabri, Dr. Sabri. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, were participants are listening or not? Or they have gone? Yes, sir. I mean, we are, they are receiving your uh, voice. I will share with you another joke. We have a band of students, and some of our professors they, they keep on making the lecture, and the students keep their this one on, and then they go to, to the work and then come back and make attendance. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sir, we, are not, we are not like that. We are not like that. Are not like that. <laughs> so don't make me like that. Don't make me like that. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Here, uh, the participants assembled here for uh, ga gaining the knowledge from your end. So everyone, no, right. very... no, it's, it's not Dr. Sabri. Don't be mistaken. It's not <laughs> gaining <laughs> knowledge from me. I also gain knowledge when they okay. ask me questions. When they put questions to me, what was there? What was then? And how this was possible? Then I, I also learn. Then I also learn. Fantastic. And then, then also I have decided in my lifetime, rest of my life, I have spent twenty years in my this profession. Now, rest of my life, I will become a good author. Then authors need questions. Yes. So once you put up questions, we try to answer them in our books. Those become textbooks then. Sure, sir. So ask me questions whenever you keep your, you, you stop me anytime. It's not such a big issue. OK, sir. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. thank you. So I was telling you that in the morning, probably in the midnight, I came to know about one of that article in American Physical Society, it has appeared there, that the professor from Japan, from Tsukuba University, has come up, has synthesized another form of this carbon, another form of this carbon. He has synthesized it. He named that as a pentadiamond. He named this as a penta diamond, penta and penta, he has he has synthesized it from pentagonal hydrocarbon and has named it as a penta diamond. And once he calculated the mechanical properties and electrical properties, it has uh, he he believes and he expects it is far better than the diamond. It is far better than the diamond. This penta diamond. In the morning, in the midnight, I, wrote, I, I have, I'm having that note also with me. It has appeared somewhere in some journals also. So read about the Penta Diamond. I have written also in one of my books, one chapter on carbon. I have given the name as a rising carbon, as a rising carbon. So many more forms of carbon may come up in future also. Our students and young young faculty need to work. Why diamond is a diamond? 
Why it is the hardest material? It has one of the orientations and that atoms could collaborate with in some particular way, so we get a diamond. Now we have a mastery in nanotechnology. We can vary the orientation of atoms and make other materials that could be much more stronger, that could be much more good. We have now the, in nanotechnology, we have the mastery now. That's, this is another name of the, uh, this one. We can maneuver things, we can make the things atom by atom. We can change its orientation, we can change its variations, and we can get other materials also. Those might be better than this one. Carbon has this property, carbon has this beauty that it can be changed, it can change its variations. So this is a graphene. We just see it's one of my student, PhD student is working on and that uh, defects in graphene, how defects are being created in graphene, particularly the stacking faults. It is stronger, 100 times stronger than steel. It's a perfect thermal conductor. It is very much rigid. This two-dimensional crystalline material graphene has revealed fascinating and unexpected properties which make it interesting for both fundamental and future applications. It will substantially change your life. This, the material which is being used of which I have made mention. So dear, dear colleagues, dear colleagues and students, I have been saying to my students that nature have been doing this nanotechnology from its inception. Your DNA well within your body is 2.5 nanometers. It's not only the carbon nanotube which is 2.5 nanometers. DNA is also having 2.5 nanometers dimension. Oh, Protein is a 5 nanometers dimension. These are natural nanomaterials. These are natural nanomaterials. Cell membrane 10 nanometers. The glucose 20 to 75 nanometers. All viruses still date, probably all viruses, including the H1N1, the Ebola, below 100 nanometers. And no, I do not know, I have not gone through it, what is the actual size of this coronavirus, this COVID virus? Is there any participant who can tell me, who can educate me, what is the, what is the dimension of this? COVID. It is in micro, micro, sir. Some reported that that is 500 micrometers, sir. 500 micrometers, sir. 500 micrometers. Uh, 500 micrometers. Yeah. Two protein cells are uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. bounded by the uh, virus, sir. Two protein cells. Two protein cells are yeah, bounded yeah, yeah. by the virus, sir. That's why the sizes are yeah. very, very big, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Sir, that's why I made a call to the director of one of that uh, medical institutes that I said that it is not then airborne. If its size is 500, then the physics says that it will be attracted towards the earth. It will go down on the surface. It will not, it will not be airborne then. No doubt it will remain in air for some time, for a few seconds, then it will go down on the earth. The gravity will pull it down. If it is in micrometers, yes. If it is size is in nanometers, then it will be an airborne disease. Then, then, then there is a then there is a difficulty now. Yes. Then it will be very difficult to move on streets. Then it, it will be very difficult. Yes. So if it is in micrometers, it's a question of debate. If it is in nano dimensions, it's an airborne then. But World Health Organization has declared that it's an airborne. They should know its size. So H1N1, all bacteria. We have then we came to that natural man-made nanomaterials, which are in buckyball is a one nanometer, graphene is a one atom thick only. We have your computers, your PCs, 
which are below 100 nanometers in your computer, which you are using right now, the gadgets. <clears throat> so we have materials, natural materials, man-made materials. Try to explore other materials which are in nano dimensions, probably in lotus, which, which remains always clean, might have nano dimension machinery there to clean its leaves. It remains always shining. Antibodies we, we need to understand. And then physics says the mystery behind this nanomaterials that why it is superior than other materials, then their bulk counterparts, the physics says that the mystery, that one of the reasons is that why they are superior materials, that these are being dominated by surface effects. We call that as a surface physics. Once you break any, any bulk material, into nano dimensions, the majority of its atoms, the majority of its molecules comes on surface. And it is that versatility, it is that property, it is that phenomena which makes these materials special, which makes these materials unique, and then they perform much better than their bulk counterparts. It's not only I have discussed about the carbon, it is the copper also, it is the aluminium also, it is the iron also. The building which we used to last for 20 years, 30 years or 50 years will last, will last for more than 10 decades. Engineering point of view, it will have nano materials well during its construction. It will be far more better and it's only the surface effects which makes them better. An object gets smaller, its surface to volume ratio increases so that it becomes more reactive. I have told about the gold. Gold changes its color. It's not only red, it changes its color with the dimensions and its melting point decreases. Silver has an antimicrobial properties. Copper loses its conductivity. Aluminium becomes transparent, which is opaque. Materials may exhibit new and improved optical, mechanical, thermal, chemical, electrical properties. So with this, this nanotechnology is in medical field. It's in everywhere. It's in diagnosis. It's in separation, it's in imaging, it's in cosmetics, it's cancer, it's drug delivery, it's in forensic sinuses, it's in infectious and inflammatory diseases also. See in cosmetics, I will give you an example. Dr. Sabri, Dr. Sabri, hello. Hello. Sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Is anybody listening? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why I'm. So it's a periodic. This is my habit, sir. This is my habit. Dr. Sabri. Hello. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Keep your Can mic you on. Keep your yes, mic on so that yes, I. Sir. Yeah, it becomes very difficult for me to speak, go on speaking. Nobody is uh, stopping me. It becomes very difficult and odd. OK, sir. OK, sir. <laughs> so though I'll tell you one, the participants, if the participants will bear me out, I'll tell you a joke of one of my beloved teacher. My beloved teacher was involved in gross involvement, was in tuitions. You know tuitions? Private tuitions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know? Yeah, home, home tuitions. So he was involved in that. Uh, and then he used to dictate the notes during those days when we used to have our graduations. Okay, sir. But gentleman, this gentleman, this my teacher, was a very capable teacher. 
He went to a um, condolence meeting. Okay, sir. And condolence meeting, he spoke on that condolence meeting. He stood up and said that this gentleman was very nice, principal was. He was very sober, he was generous, kama. He was all faithful, full stop. And then his colleagues told him, that, you are not sir, in intuition center, you are, you are putting commas and full stops. <laughs> you are in the <laughs> So he used to have his stops and full stops and commas there also. So I was telling you about this uh, nanotechnology in medical businesses. Uh, it is already there, still in infancy. It will, there are many reports have come up that COVID-19 could be even treated with this nanotechnology, but the vaccine is still on. But many more, many more laboratories are working on this nanotechnology could be the answer to this okay. COVID-19, which has threatened the whole world. And regarding one of that, uh, one of that, this one, I'll tell you regarding this one, cosmetics, I remember that iodex, I remember that iodex. When my okay. grandfather tells me that you give that, um, uh, give that iodex, and then he used to rub that screen, who used to rub, and then it used to take half an hour, no, no relief. Now see these, the same iodex which use the nanomaterials, okay, it gives a okay, relief in 10 minutes, within, a, within less than that. Why? Because the pore size of your skin is greater than the pore size of the material. It goes, it absorbs here and it gives a relief immediately. Yes, sir, it penetrates easily. Yeah, and then there yeah. are many other examples which we used to give for this one. We used to have a wand dressings where we have antibacterial materials and they uh, heal the wand immediately probably 10 times sooner what it is being done uh, during the old days. Now new new dressing materials are coming in uh, in this one hostels, which are loaded with antibacterial materials where we use nanomaterials. Oh, that's great, sir. Uh, materials in transportation section, and you are, uh, there are probably 32 places where we use nanomaterials in a car. I remember last time, I do not know exactly when I visited Chennai, when I visited Tamil Nadu, it was probably 2010 or 11. I oh. met two of my students. I met two of my students. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And uh, both of them, uh, both of them had their MTech. And then I told them, what are you doing? They said that uh, we are working in Mahindra, Mahindra. I said, what? What are you doing there? After making okay. engineering. They said that we are working on coating materials, nano coatings. We coat okay, the vehicles, okay. we coat the vehicles, and then this coating makes that scratch resistance. Oh, fine, sir. And then that will be an elegant also, that will not lose its shine. That will not lose its shine. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So these were the students in yeah, long back, probably 10,000, 2011 or 10. Uh, yeah, 11, 10 I was oh. out. 10 I was in Middle East. It was allowed. So, okay. <laughs> so it gives thermal barrier and wear resistance coatings. It gives high strength, lightweight composite for fuel efficiency, high temperature sensors for under the hood, improved displays, battery technologies, wear resistance tires, space crafts will be benefited, aircrafts will be benefited, anti fogging, which uh, stops our cars during the early hours. It will not have now anti-reflective coatings, batteries, enhanced liquid cooling, heating, heat transfer. Many vehicles burn down because of these heats. Now we have that cooling heat transfer liquids. That will be. We will have many things in transportation. You need to. You need to, Dr. Savary. You need to give assignment to each assignment to each of your student. They will work on it. There is a much more it's scope. Better. Definitely. Yeah, the transportation can revolutionize. It can revolutionize the economy. Okay, sir. Surely, sir. And you know, in 1920, in 1920, people used to get in United States laborers, employees used to get two dollars. 
It was only the automobile factory. It was only the transportation factory. We used okay. to give five dollars. We used to give five dollars instead of two dollars to their employees, with the intention oh, that everybody will purchase a car. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. So there are many things, buy side coatings. There are many things where these materials can be used. You see, the car bumpers are being are being made with the help of these carbon nanotubes. They become elastic then. Once they once they 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 are being bounced with any wall or anything, they automatically retain retain its original position. So car bumpers. There are many there are many velocities. Uh, uh, that gives the load. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, tell me, tell me, sir, if anybody is speaking. Participants, any queries, professor? <clears throat> no. No, sir. We no. can we can continue. Sir. No, sir. No, sir. You continue, sir. Okay. 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 No, so I have listed few of the few of the issues which uh, in nanotechnology can be used in agriculture and food. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is a big list. I'll give you an example in probably in Hungary that they have they were able to increase the shelf life of a water bottle. Shelf life of a water bottle, which was probably two months, it has been increased to three times. It is now six months lifetime have been increased to a water bottle. So is the case with other materials, other food items. So with nanotechnology, you are increasing the shelf life of the material. Not only this, we use the sensors, nano sensors. If God forbid anything goes wrong, it gives a buzz to the grocer that this and this item needs to be taken away. It's going to be outdated. So in food technology, it is going to revolutionize. In agriculture sector, it is making now nano pesticides. We use less fertilizers now, which has made the. So we use agrochemical. Very, very less, very less fertilizer. And food processing, we also nano encapsulated and flower and enhancers we use. Though that might have some disadvantages, but. It's being used. It's an initial stage, and it has. It is probably the green revolution too may come up with the help of nanotechnology, and we may have surplus for for almost for the entire world. For the entire world, still I'm seeing in some of the countries the rice from Sheri Punjab. Most of the countries in the Gulf are having food from the Punjab area. So supplements also. You see, there are other products where nanotechnology has been used. I'll quote one. I'll quote one. See, uh, it has come up last time in uh, in the market also. I was told that it cost us nano shirt has come up. A shirt coated with nano materials, but it was three to four thousand rupees. It was costly. Science is always it uh, it removes the divides it should go to a rickshaw wala it should go to a taxi wala it should go to a farmer also the shirt even that 4000 shirt even a teacher cannot afford so it had gone back probably see what it does what it does it is being used also in united states army uh, those who are on borders uh, the uniform is coated with nanomaterials. These nanomaterials, besides making them power free, besides making them shiny, besides making them self repellent, makes them works as sensors. God forbid if a drop of a bullet comes in contact with that uniform. It gives an information to the headquarters that such and such shoulder, soldier has been injured and he or she needs a treatment, needs a first aid. This is a nano sensor in your coat, in your uniform. 
Same thing we want for the everyone. Same thing we want for everyone. They should wear a cloth which is coated, which is loaded with nanomaterial, which is loaded with nanomaterial. Okay. So that it could sense that a virus has come in contact with you. Okay, sir. It's on your shirt, it's on your pant, it's on your coat. You need to wash them. It's going to enter your body. So those things are possible with the help of nanotechnology. So many fabric industries are now using nanotechnology, using nanomaterials with their fabrics. Those fabrics are become now self-repellent. Those becomes anti-fouling. You cannot have to wash those clothes now and then. You cannot have to go to those, um, those iron shops now and then. Also those, also those uniforms are also good to guard your body, to guard your body. God forbid, if any, any organ well within the body goes wrong, it gives an information to your parents that your son or a daughter needs to see a doctor that such and such organ has gone bad. And see now what is existing now. Even the eminent doctors, they lose their kidneys, they lose their organs, they treat the other patients, they don't know what is happening within their internal body. Now see, with the help of nanotechnology, we are getting a uniform, we are getting clothes, which are guarding your body. You have now self-cleaning clothes. You have now self-cleaning houses. You need not to clean them now and then. It is coated with photocatalytic material. The photocatalytic coatings produce chemical reactions when subjected to ultraviolet light. That is sunlight that help in oxidizing foreign substances and decompose them. So we have many more advantages with these small materials, with these invisible materials. We have hydrophilic properties also. And then these coatings are subjected to ultra... The hydrophilic action then causes dirt particles to be carried away. We have natural cleaning like Avilas. We have another transportation section which comes on a road, which comes on construction. Now the roads will last for decades together. You need not to maximize them now and then. You use nanomaterials that within the asphalt. Service life can be doubled through the use of nano additives. Nano silica and clickner and nanofibers used to increase the mechanical property and durability. Photocatalytic TiO2 reduce carbon monoxide and other emissions also. These are being used also in buildings. Now we have buildings which will last for decades together, much more. We have self-healing materials. We have materials which self-heal. We all encounter various damages like cracks to the objects around us. From a simple plate to a huge moment, these damages can result in changing the essential physical properties of substances like strength, shape, thermal and electrical conductivity, acoustic properties. These damages always require human attention and need to be repaired in order to use them correctly. But self-healing materials get damaged like a crack or something. They, they themselves heal the damage and are again perfectly capable of carrying out various operations. We have shape memory alloys where the materials regain its shape. We have bone plates. Memory effects pulls bones together to promote healings. We have surgical anchors. Muscles grow around the wire. This prevents tissue damage that could be caused by staples or screws. Now that the last one, which was supposed to be taught, which you have mentioned that synthesis of nanomaterials. Dr. Sabri. Yes, sir. The title is on synthesis. Yes, synthesis, so, sir. 
Nonetheless, I have put the last slide for the synthesis. There are dozens of techniques and many more can come up if our students, if our new generation will work on them. We need to have very economical ways to produce nanomaterials. We, we need to have very economical ways. And okay. once we will have economical nanomaterials, we will have products very cheap. Maybe it may go to transportation, maybe it may go to our clothes, maybe it may go to medical sector. So their things will be cheap. But we need to produce materials, nanomaterials, through economical ways, through soft ways, through very, through very green ways. One of the green ways is that you can use the microwave technique. The microwave which you, which you use for cooking the food at your home, everyone of us have. Everyone. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, there are reports that few of the scientists have modified the kitchen microwave <laughs> and synthesized the nanomaterials. There are reports, scientific reports. Okay, sir. Please read that and ask the participants to read those notes so that these things should not become complicated. Okay. No, microwave, no microwave can be can be modified to make nanomaterials. We have many okay. more. I remember one, one professor from United States camp. He said that even the polythene bags can be used to synthesize nanomaterials. Polythene, which can sustain the temperature up to 150 or so. So I will leave you. I have already written a letter to one of that geologists that, and then he sent immediately to me that thank you for your kind note. I am glad you enjoyed reading the article on coming home. I am very interested in your view that the Earth may have nanomaterials somewhere in store. I wonder how you visualize this might occur and what are the ways to explore this. With all good dishes, this is Frank Rhodes, the president of Coronal University. He's one of the good geologists. I have written him long back that Earth might have nanomaterials in store, natural nanomaterials. Great, sir. So we have also one of that autocolors wherein we can use, we can make nanomaterials. But these are dangerous. We need to find out nano autocolors which can be used in microwaves, in kitchen microwaves. Those are also possible. Plastic microwaves are possible. These are some of that rods we have made and then see these pictures. I'll share you with a slide. When I was in Middle East, a group of students from nursery came and visited our center, nanotechnology center. You just see how to inspire and how to engage your next generation and then how to inspire them, how to engage them into new technologies, into new sciences, so that they will train their, their next generation in these new sciences which are going to address the major issues which the world is facing. And it is also good, it's valuable to give people the space to watch their questions and ideas and use their findings to make the world better. Raising yes. the next generation is most important job in the teachers, of the teachers. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Dr. Sabri, I need sir. to take questions. I need to take questions. Yes, sir. Thank you for your beautiful presentation, sir. And uh, mm -hmm. one question from Janani Kumar. Do we have okay, any coating okay, for filtering harmful uh, gases from... Uh, exactly. I should see I should see my participants now. Yes. I should see my participants now. Okay. Uh, yeah, dear, yeah. Dear participants, yeah, dear participants, yeah, please. Dear yeah. professor, do you have any question? Please unmute your okay. mic and ask to professor, professor Shah. Sir, good, good afternoon, sir. Very energetic yeah. and uh, very. Please tell me, Ajay. Please tell me. Very energetic and very enthusiastic. Uh, I becoming enthusiastic as I am hearing your talk. <laughs> so, 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 speak loudly. <laughs> yeah, very nice, sir. And thankful mm -hmm. to you for this uh, very wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I have been actually working on this nano 
particles application actually in the solar desalination it is in this okay yeah but uh, the difficulty which i found is one is that uh, the synthesizing of nano is uh, becoming difficult in the lab hmm. and when we go for actually purchasing this nano uh, hmm. most of the materials are expensive at no, least yes. in india so yes. these are the two things which i am facing a problem in order to have the more experimentation to explore the application of this uh, nano into the field of solar desalination sir uh, can you help it out what is the way to uh, really apply this one Yes. Ajay, I told you that we need sustainable materials. We need sustainable materials. Yes, sir. We need sustainable materials. We need materials which could be cheap, which could be economical. So, the, regarding one of your question is that that it becomes difficult for synthesizing the material. Go and I I have told you that I also believe in simplicity. There was a one. There are few reports that. Kitchen microwave has been modified slightly. Kitchen microwave. Kitchen microwave has been modified slightly, and they have been able to synthesize nanomaterials with that. Try that. That can. That is a very good option because we are indoors. Our institutions are closed. So the better thing is that. Better thing. The better thing is that we need to find out. Uh, we need to find out the ways why. Which would you have done in your home? So try this way. If a home microwave kitchen can be modified and then uh, synthesized and materials are being synthesized, that could be good. That could be good. Sir, can you hear me, sir? me, sir? Yes, yes, I can. Sir, sir, I'm Karthik from Annamalai University. Please. Uh, sir, uh, sir, some of the nanotechnology related research uh, research are when it reaches to the common man. Yes. How many decades will? Oh, how many decades will go? <laughs> yes, very good, very good. Sir, uh, as you uh, as you might have been hearing that these vaccines, these vaccines may come next year, then next year. No, it is not like that. Trials take decades together. Vaccines take decades together. Materials take decades together. But I'm sure not more than a decade, even well within the less than a decade, there's, you will see the products in the market which will have nano material as well within it. With less than a decade, you will see. There are many products in, in the market which are having nano coatings, which are having nano, nano technology used in that. Less than a decade. I'm sure. Uh, many people, many people understand about nanotechnology, sir. Uh, they are thinking uh, nano materials are harmful, uh, very harmful to our human being. What's your opinion, sir? Yeah, yeah I, I will never say anything bad about. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a lover of this technology. How can a lover say bad about a lover? I will never say. And there, then there is nothing wrong. I will say you. I'll say to this um, to my all participants that there is nothing wrong in this nanotechnology. It is not harmful. It's nothing. It is a beneficial. It is giving relief to the public. It is going to address the major challenges of the world. There is nothing bad. There is a section of the people when genetically modified foods came, when green revolution first came, they opposed it. People were people. You know, in 1950s, in 1960s. Millions died because of starvation. Millions died without food. And now in 7 billion people, money might lose life without this one, genetically modified foods, without Green Revolution 1. People opposed that also. And those group of sections also oppose these new technologies. These new technologies are beneficial, and these new technologies are going to give a relief. Please. Please. Yes, sir. But, sir. But personally, I am uh, uh, I facing the, some problem because I am I am I am I am. Hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Karthik, once again, Karthik. Oh, okay. 
yes uh, sir i am doing research on nano i am doing research on nano technology sir some people uh, after when i left my when i left my uh, laboratory so some people sir isolated me they go to and wash your hands and wash your face then only we have shake your hands they, they, they tell me like that sir that's why i am asking sir. <laughs> it's not like that it's yes. not like that tell them at least to go to the google and see the benefits of this new technology why it is going to give a relief tell them ask the doctors ask the doctors how it is going to revolutionize the medical sector go to the agriculture scientists go to engineers how it is going to revolutionize mechanical engineering how it is going to to say goodbye to the digital divide which is right now we are facing with teachers we teach online half of the students do not have their smartphones hopefully hopefully with this technology we will have new phones we will have new laptops which will cost not more than 1000 the transfers will become cheap and the efficiency will be better than what we have right now ask them to go to google and read its benefits next one sir one request sir one, sir kartik kartik yes sir kartik yeah. uh, i think so we can uh, give in other option to the other participants other also. option please, please. Uh, sir one request sir one, only request only sir sir please show me your contact details that is helpful for us kartik i'll do one thing i'll share you all the details about mr shah and uh, he has in uh, i'll share you the details sir uh, uh, yeah, yeah, dr sabri will share everything there's nothing to be worried Oh, okay, thank thank you. You. Sir. Yeah, please. Please. Sir, I have. I have. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Celery Bug from PSG, sir. Yeah, please. Please. Hello. Sir, sir, I'm currently working on additive manufacturing. Ah, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Ah. Uh, please. Hello, sir. sir i am currently working on additive manufacturing process sir is there any technology can we use a nano particles in additive manufacturing sir, uh, sir uh, i am sorry i could not hear you i am currently working on a digital manufacturing uh, hello sir. yeah is yes, additive okay, manufacturing okay, 3d okay, printing yeah, 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 yeah. i got selva deepak yeah yeah selva yes, you see in 3d printing and in other printings we give you the materials which Which will have a strength much better than the existing ones. In three D printing, you give a material. Sir. Suppose like that, yes, you sir. give that ventilators. We we'll give yes, we'll give nano material. We will coat it with the nano material. Your your product will be much better, much much more better than the existing one. Three D printing, we are mostly working on uh, majorly on metals and the uh, polymers, sir. Is the we can use the nano particles to replace them? To yes, yes, we can, we can, we can, we can use, we can use. Yes. Next. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next. Thank sir, you. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, hello, hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, can I speak, sir? Yes, yes, please. Uh, sir, I am Janani Sivan Kaya from uh, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Department of Physics and nanotechnology. I am working there. Good. Uh, I am doing my work. Uh, okay. I am doing. I am actually doing my work in drug delivery systems. Okay. Drug delivery systems. Computational modeling on drug delivery. Actually, okay, okay. when these people are speaking, my work is in graphene only. Actually, okay. uh, you are talking about uh, graphene layers, right? Uh, my question okay. is how the how the surface area is able to decide the reactivity. First question. How surface This area is able to decide the reactivity. First question. Number two, we have different layers of graphene. So when the number of layers keep on changing, how the reactivity is varied? Next question is toxicology. Nano toxicology. How to know a specific nano material is well versed to be used in a drug delivery system? What are the parameters to be studied when we are using those nano materials in our body actually? body reaction will be totally different when we are using a nano material outside the body that is different inside the body it is different so how to what are the main parameters which are to be executed medically to know it's well fit for a drug delivery system because i am also designing a drug delivery system jani listen jani jani listen jani listen listen are you listening yeah 
Yes. Yeah, you I'm listening you. You you talked about the graphene, the surface area. You talked about that? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. The surface area. See the see yes. the benefit. See this beautiful material. See this beautiful material, which is a single layer of a carbon, where every carbon atom, where every carbon atom is on the surface, where every carbon atom is on the surface. Okay. So you will have a hundred percent reactivity on the surface. You have a single layer. Every carbon atom is active. None is inside. It's not a particle. Mm. It's a surface. Mm. So yeah, got it. Yeah. The reaction will be hundred percent. Surface reaction okay. will be hundred percent. Now, regarding uh, your another okay. question, which you talk, talked about that it is a very toxic, toxic and a non-toxic materials are being characterized in clinical trials. Okay. Whether that is for biological biological body or not, that's being decided in the clinical trials. But I'm sure carbon is not toxic. Okay. Toxic. Yeah, that's sure. That's what I'm working actually in graphene nano ribbons. Uh, graphene nano ribbons. You are working on, a very, good, are working on yeah. a very good material. You keep on. You go on without having any apprehension that it is toxic. No, not at all. You go on. It's a very good area of research. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm area. getting very good results in computational uh, research. Oh, very yeah. good. You go on and see uh, see then other aspects of the graphene theoretical aspects. Yes, sir. And then yes, I sir. told you about this one. This this Penta diamond has come up. He has made yeah. also the calculation simulations simulations. Yeah, yeah. You mean to say about Kavosi, sir? Huh? You mean to you mean to say about Kavosi, sir? Kavosi, Kavosi, Professor Kavosi, Professor Kavosi. No, I I don't know. I don't know. Is he one minute? Yeah, written? No. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Let's leave the session for other participants okay, also. Okay, okay. Others. Yes. Come on, others. Please. Thank you so much, okay. Professor. Jenny, this is very good research field. Go on, go on. There's nothing bad. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Please. Professor? Thank you. Yes. Yes, uh, please. Uh, any other professor want to interact hello, with the hello, professor? Yes, sir. Sir. sir, good morning. Yes, yes, please, please. Good morning. We had very good session, sir, with the different different applications uh, using nanotechnology. Yes. yes. Please, yes. But how can we use nanoparticles in bioimaging, sir? Yeah, bioimaging. You see, you see, we use. And then bioimaging, and then in a, and then in a forensic, forensic sciences, then in forensic sciences. See, earlier we used to have a micrograph, we used to call that as a micrograph, wherein even a doctor cannot read where that actually stroke has come up, which, which veins have been damaged. By using these nanomaterials, nanoparticles, which goes deep into this one, it gives a very clear picture, it gives an a vivid picture, even that layman can understand that why the damage has occurred. It's already it's already in used in imaging system, and it is it has given a revolution in forensic sciences also, where people identify their fingers but they refuse. Now using nanomaterials, using nano fingertips, they can never refuse. They can identify their fingertips. Now these are mine. Sir, any nanomaterial can uh, we can use, sir, for bioimaging? Any nanomaterial? No, 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 no. There might be specific one. There might be specific one. No. Uh, to be very honest, sir, I don't know exactly what what nanomaterials are being okay, used. Okay, sir. Huh? Okay, sir. Okay. Sir. I don't know what PIO2 is there. Yes, sir. That might be used. Please, next one. Next Good one. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Professor, I'm very grateful to honor to listen to your lecture, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. I, I have two questions. So, coming to our, our topic, as you know, how to educate the students in terms of uh, using the nano materials. First of all, first, Raj, Raj, see, Raj, see, I told you that we need to educate to our students about this new technology. We need, we have to. We have to, because invention is mother of, necessity is the mother of invention. COVID came up, 
Now we have to find out its vaccine. We have to find out its remedy. There are many issues besides COVID, which I have interested even in medical sector, in water, in agriculture, in employment, in other aspects. Those issues will be addressed through this new technology. And we need to educate them. We need to educate our students. And students need to read new things. Gone are those days when they, when they used to copy those old things. No new things have come up. I told you that when I was in matric, when I was in eighth class, there were only two forms of a carbon. Now, right now, I'm not too old. I'm not, I'm 50 years old. Now, in this, in this, in these 30 years, in these 30 years, you see another three problems that have come up. You know, NPRT people have, now the, uh, uh, the school education people have to introduce these new things into the syllabi. And we teachers have an every responsibility to teach our students new technology. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, Hello. sir. Yes, Sir, please. In, the, in the case of characterization of nanomaterials, what are the characters which is different uh, of the nanomaterial is different from other uh, materials? See, what is what is the good thing in this nanotechnology? The tools and the principles are same. The tools and the principles. We characterize the material. We want to know it is structure. We want to know it is morphology. I told you in first of the slides that this is the first science wherein it has been said that the properties do change when you change the geometry of the particle. So you need to find out its geometry. You need to find out its shape. And then you need to find out its structure also. And then if you are a biologist, if you are a biologist, if you are an engineer, you need to find out its toxicity. You need to find it out its biological version. And if you are an engineer, you need to find out its strength also. So there are three, four characterization techniques which can confirm whether your nanomaterial is good for applications or not. It's not such a big deal. Hello. Thank you, sir. Hello, please. Hello. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Issue, issue, please. Good afternoon, sir. Please. Uh, you are an inspiration, sir. Actually, I am calling from engineering college. Uh, I have seen your lectures here. I always uh, take your lectures very seriously. And the way you teach the subject is really inspiring for us as young. So please uh, accept my warm greetings from SSM family, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. My question is regarding yes, sir, good afternoon. the presentation that at the next at the next at the next level of technology for the next three years or six years will be nanotechnology. And yes. now in that respect, our uh, students from different uh, branches. So, what are the various platforms we can use and we can make them to understand how we can have a uh, synchronization from different branches with the nanotechnology. As you have mentioned, that uh, if we if we uh, if we use this nanotechnology with like electrical engineering with electronics, then we can have a different type of technology to be used overall society. So I'm so my question yeah, is regarding. Yeah. able to move forward so that students will be much more interested in this type of technology where an electrical engineer will be involved using this technology uh, listen now listen listen now listen now yes, listen now listen 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 you are from yes. ssm college you are from ssm college yes sir, yes, sir. sir it's actually from electrical engineering department sir. okay 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 ensure rafiki rafiki sir listen now see what happens over here I told you that this is a garden of a physical science. You cannot teach it individually to your students. A chemistry professor needs to teach, a mechanical professor needs to teach that branch, a physics professor needs to teach that branch. So it's a multidisciplinary field. A single professor cannot teach. 
your students should have a background your students should have a know how they should be acquainted with what these nano materials are and then you can take them to the electrical engineering and tell them that we have a transmission problem we have a storage problem we have an harvesting problem then those issues can be addressed but prior to that they should know they should have an equivalence that they, there are nano materials how they are being produced what are their properties what are their applications and how they are being characterized please go on next sir next hello sir next next hello next one yes uh, good afternoon good afternoon hello good afternoon sir yes good afternoon good afternoon yeah, prashant is, uh, tell, uh, tell me ah uh, this is prashant shirsagar from rajendramani college of engineering okay uh, ratnagiri okay ah uh, my question is sir uh, related with the cell filling materials ha huh? self filling materials yeah yeah self filling, self -filling materials self yes yes uh, yes self filling materials yes uh, uh, most of the applications of that self uh, filling material are found in uh, uh, i think polymer polymer materials yes 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 they are polymers so what kind of the actually uh, design strategy is applied there so that material is self filled material is self filled yeah what kind of the design strategy uh, strategy is applied there that the material is self filled after the formation of some cracks by application of uh, some external force See, see those self filled materials are being designed and then synthesized very specially very specially and then they when something happens once crack happens they self feel that part they self feel that part but the designing and synthesis i i am not a polymer scientist i do not know but it needs a special technique to grow a polymer to make a polymer and then which could heal up the material okay but no doubt i agree with you parshan that these are polymers which have this ability which have this versatility that they heal the material okay yeah Related tell me to, next one yeah. hello good afternoon hello good afternoon yes good afternoon ha sir i am i am dr vikas shivastav from baba yes. sahib bimra ambedkar university lucknow sir uh, by which technique okay. we can reduce the size of the particle in the synthesis uh -huh. process yeah there are richa uh, shrivastava see yes sir. it is a very difficult task if you have i have written at that note that it is a challenge to uh synthesize a material of your choice of your choice it is still a hit and a trial method it is still a hit and a trial method my student is in front of me we have tried many methods we have tried many methods but it is still a hit and a trial method to get a material of your own choice but there are dozens yes, of methods yeah tell me yes, sir. okay sir we can uh, we can use a, like a capping agent and uh, ultrasonic waves for the reduction of the size we, we use that we use that but still it is more or less if you need 10 nanometer particle it comes out 20 if you need 20 it comes out 30 it comes okay sir 50 so so you need to be very expert you need to be very expert richa srivastava i'll quote you an example dr sabri are you listening dr sabri yes sir i am in hello i am receiving sir you are here okay racha yes, uh, srivastava also you listen also you listen okay. i have okay, always okay. been saying uh, i have always been saying we used to have a doctor here in jammu and kashmir a very famous doctor long back i have never seen him okay but that doctor was having a quality he used to see a patient and then to write down the prescription okay sir he used to see a patient only just on looking on a patient and use the prescription oh great sir so we call him as ali john oh he's he's still known he is no more but he's still still known we we all we all nanotechnologists have to be uh, ali john we need to we need to make practices that uh, if we synthesize the material it should come of that size whichever we need so it needs a lot of practices now and then your hand should be clean and clean in making the nano materials of your choice and then put them put them for applications so okay, it needs sir, a lot 
it needs a lot of practices and it needs to, it needs to change the methods of sensitize also please tell me next next hello sir yes. can i speak hello please, please. sir this is uh, janani session sir again can i ask you one more question yeah please if you please. allow me thank yeah, you sir yeah please please Actually, you were uh, talking very interestingly related to mechanical or nano materials. Yeah, yeah. Mechanical stream, mechanical. Yeah. So, yeah. so in that, uh, if we are applying coating, uh, do we have any coating in the exhaust uh, so that uh, that exhaust uh, bad particles will be absorbed and good air alone will be coming out of the automobile? Because now everyone is uh, demanding and working with automobiles. Nobody is working. Every Even using yeah. car, bikes, scooter, in the exhaust, uh, can we clear the exhaust using a nano material? And which nano material suits best? Filter see, at a low cost. See, see, Johnny, see, Johnny. Once we coat anywhere, once we coat anywhere, it is being done in a very specialized way. You see, the normal, normal paint of a car is being done in a very specialized way. Even to whom? You have a pump, you have that gadget, and it separates uniformly. even that uniform thickness once we do the nano coatings it is being done in a very specialized way you need not to have an exhausting system and other things it goes it is being absorbed there on the surface and it gives marvelous results there is nothing to be worried about that we have no specialized ways please please next one dr sabri next one any other uh, question from the professor Uh, uh, sir once again i am karthik sir can you hear me sir yes karthik yes please uh, yes sir uh, professor sir uh, dr janani asking about uh, uh, how to uh, uh, environmental friendly exhaust will be uh, produced by nanotechnology right sir oh environmental uh, friendly exhaust environmental friendly exhaust yes sir yes. Uh, we, sir we are doing um, uh, Uh, this related research sir because uh, uh, we have to remove the ic engine in uh, uh, and introduce a new technology related fuel cell produce power to run the vehicle that there is no exhaust from uh, from it sir uh, i am right sir okay you want a car having a you want a car having an exhaust which is friendly yes sir yes. okay fine gentlemen gentlemen there will be a very less emission there will be a very less emission that even can that emission which is a hazard that can even be processed that can even be processed more to, so that the final product which will enter into the air will not be harmful which will be environmentally friendly people are working on it i'll tell you an example a similar example which is related to this there is a boy with me who is doing a patent on this one once we wash the vegetables once we wash vegetables or uh, or the fruits which are having pesticides on it once we wash them the residue of water can be re recycled and reused and then can even be used for drinking even so is the case with the emission of a vehicle it has to be processed again and uh, exhaust uh, which is finally exhaust which will not be hazards to the environment i am sure so next one sir next one hello hello sir good afternoon sir i am rashid sir rashid please rashid please sir sir rashid please yeah please rashid sir rashid okay rashid shekar rashid shekar please sir जस्ट You write down. You write down a detailed mail to me. Hello. Then I'll suggest exactly what you, you write a mail it. to me, and then why you will do it. Please. It is Shah. You write a mail to me. You write a mail to me. Okay, sir. Rat shaker. You write a mail to me. I'll suggest you what to do. Sir, sir, please tell me, sir. 
Okay, next one. Okay. Next one. Sir, tell me, sir. I, I told you write a mail to Hello. me. Doc, sir, you tell him to share my mail to yes, you. Sir. Yo, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah, please share, share my mail. Please. I'll, I'll share his sir, mobile number. Don't worry. Sure. Oh, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll, sir, I'll, 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 I think we have some yeah, poor network, right? Next one. Next one. Sir, uh, Professor, any other questions from your end? Okay. Okay. Sir, I hope uh, there will be no, there. There is no more questions, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Dr. Okay, Sami, sir. Uh, yes. Sir. And then, with a last message to you, that we teachers need to teachers need to be very engrossed in books, engrossed. Okay. Sir. So that will be ex expert to the extent that the new generation will be able to handle all those major issues which the world is facing right now okay sir though i am an open though i am a very optimistic but still i am afraid that within this 30 years within three decades we will be 10 billion what will happen to those 10 billion people when these viruses like covid viruses like will separate what will happen to them we have to make the next generation capable of handling all those issues. Yes, sure. So this yes. is our first and foremost responsibility to make the next generation capable to handle these issues. Sure, sir. Sure, sure sir. sir. Sure, sure. As a professor, yeah. all we'll take into this uh, particular matter into our uh, further research and uh, cultivating our uh, uh, next generation students to um, uh, um, handle such a kind of situation in future. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you, sir. Sir, on thank again, uh, it's a thanks note on behalf of our Hindustan College of Engineering Technology and the Department of Automobile Engineering and our managing trustee and uh, our CEO and advisor and uh, the participants who are all take part in our uh, session. On behalf of all, uh, behalf of all, I thank you for your beautiful and enthusiastic presentation on today, sir. <laughs> I, I, really, we are. <laughs> Was it enthusiastic? <laughs> <laughs> we are really honored to have in our uh, uh, nanometers FDP session, sir. Yeah. Only the thing is that um, one thing which I do not like in my throughout my teaching is that the one way monologue students should keep me on my toes okay sir. so they should keep on bombarding questions okay then it becomes a good teaching good. otherwise it is a dull teaching <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> okay. yes, sir, yes dull teaching i used to give my students beforehand the lecture that okay. will discuss this lecture tomorrow so they come prepared to ask questions and then i used to reply maybe i may not be knowing all questions but yes. best to my expectations, best to the things I should reply them. Great, sir. Great, sir. Thank you very much. And then share the feedback with me also later on, sir. Sure, when sir. With when pleasure, are... we'll share the feedback. I, 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 I uh, it's my extended thanks to your uh, um, family members also. They are supporting lots to uh, take up with this session, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Thank you. Good to see you. Good. Ah. Thank you. Thank you, participants. Thank you, Thank participants. You. Thank you all. Hello, sir. Yeah. Can, can you please share the PPT so that it can be useful for us? Uh, sir, actually, uh, in Google, it, it won't yeah. have any. Uh... Not here, sir. In the WhatsApp ah. group. In the WhatsApp, ah. you can share. I hope. Sir, uh, once yeah. the yeah. Uh, session expert share the PPT, yeah, sure, I can share the PPT in our WhatsApp group. Yes, not an issue. Because not sir, these issue. are not the DRDO or anything. Oh, we can share this. I hope. Uh, whatever may yeah. be, that may be yeah. his personal okay. content. Yeah. Uh, content. If they accept, we yeah, can already, share. You, you know or not, they can. Uh, the people who are doing, they can take the snapshots also better. See, they can use uh, it like, like misutilize. See, I'm not <laughs> telling like that. If that okay. I've seen, I have a DRDO, I have seen some places they have played the PPTs. I have taken the pinto. I am basically taking the snap, uh, snapshots. I'm telling no. 
Yes, yes, but yes. They can, they Actually, can see. Uh, during this online meeting, we used to take a screenshot on our mobile phone for each and yeah. every slide. Yeah, also uh, done, sir. But yeah. see, it is better to give because already the useless people they can they can do anything. Harnessing can be done anyway. Trashing. Yes. Uh, anything. Yes, but yes, if sir. they if they give privately, it, as in public will, it is good. Thanks. Yeah, sir. Thank you. Ah, thank, thank you, ma. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, professor. Um, thank you all. Thank you all. Sir, 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 yeah, dear sir. Cut this. Yeah, please cut it. Uh, uh, sir, please uh, share me the uh, professor contact details, sir. That, cut it. Uh, I'll do one thing. Cut it. Cut it. Uh, sir. Na ena pandra abdi na. Adha na ma WhatsApp group le alla oru profile to share pani erang pro. Cut it. Ah, okay. Profile contain all his uh, uh, name, contact number, email ID, everything. Or okay, sir. you can search Doctor M S Shah. NIT Srinagar. Automatically oh. in Google, the uh, second uh, link uh, it has to give an uh, his entire detail. Okay, okay, okay. Thank and, you, sir. And Karthik, one more uh, request. So, uh, sir, so during the entire presentation, you are not mute your mic. So automatically, what happened? Uh, some noise is getting inside. So uh, in the next meeting, kindly mute your uh, mic. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, Karthik. Thank you. 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 Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. And Karthik, tomorrow also uh, the session expert is uh, producing a lot of nano materials. Okay, sir. So supposed to be, uh, I think so. You have some idea in uh, producing IC engine coating and all. Definitely, he will help you to do such kind of things. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, but that little work on it, sir. Moon pattern, we are going to do. Great, great, great. Nano coating will work on it. Work on it. This is submit on it. Now, job or that wait on it, sir. Fine, Karthik. Sure, we'll okay. support you. Uh, thank you, sir. Unga upload a detail on your post, please, sir. Sure, definitely, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Participant, shall I close this meeting? Yes, sir. Close, please, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sure, sir. We will close the meeting. Yeah. Ajay Kavita, Arunima, and Balaji. Bhuvendran, because uh, okay. Thank you. I'll close the session.